Hello, Dr. Amrin, are you able to hear me? Uh, Dr. Amrin, I think you have to join with the uh, video also. Like a uh, video icon is not visible. Is it visible now, ma'am? Am I audible actually? Uh, you are audible. You are audible, but video, that icon is not coming. One second. I think you joined with two, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, because uh, my laptop was showing some problem with the video and audio both. So uh, okay. laptop I'll be using for the uh, PPT and uh, this one I will be using for talking. That's right. Okay, right. Uh, uh, Lalita, madam, I think even another one also you have to make co-host like Dr. Amrin Khan, it is there. I think uh, it will be easy for uh -huh. to... Yes, ma'am, I can see that. Ma'am, I've put the YouTube link in the chat box, sir. Oh. Okay. Mm -hmm. oh, yes, ma'am, your uh, slides are visible to us. Jyoti madam, uh, Lavanya P, I made her host and I'm leaving ma'am. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Dr. Amrin, I think uh, uh, once uh, you can stop Yeah, yeah I'll stop sharing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just uh, checking. Yeah. Is it okay ma'am? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Srujana, you can share the screen. Uh, Ma'am will uh, just start in five minutes because uh, the students are joining. No problem, ma'am. Thank you. 
Yeah, Dr. Amrin, uh, shall we start? Like students will be joining. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Good afternoon, one and all. On behalf of Department of Chemistry and Forensic Science, I welcome all the students and our guest speaker, Dr. Amrin, for a webinar on IPR in India. I take this opportunity to introduce our guest speaker, Dr. Kairunisa Amrin, to all the participants. Uh, Dr. Amrin is working as a young scientist for ICMR, DHR at Department of Electrical and Electronics Engineering, Bitspilani, Hyderabad campus. Before this, she was a sub national post -doctor doctorate fellow with the Department of Electrical and Electronics Engineering, Bitspilani. Prior to this, she worked as an assistant professor at Department of PG Chemistry, St. Anne's College for Women, Hyderabad, India. Dr. Amrin completed her BSc from Usmani University completed her MSc in analytical chemistry from Velour Institute of Technology. She has completed her PhD from there with specialization in electrochemistry. Dr. Amrin has worked as a teaching come research associate and as a CSIR research senior research fellow at VIT. Her research interests are biosensing, electrochemical sensing, nanotechnology, microfluidic, electrochemical sensing, 3D printed electrodes and material synthesis. During the course of her career, she has been awarded fellowships and awards like SERB NPDF, CSIR, SRF, Research Award from VIT in recognition for her contribution to research and publications in reputed journals. Recently, she has been awarded the prestigious Young Scientist Fellowship by ICMR DHR. She has, 30, she has 37 publications, two Indian patents filed to her credit. She has also co-authored 12 book chapters for reputed publications like Elsevier, IOP, Science. She also presented papers in more than 15 national and international conferences. Uh, Dr. Amrin is a passionate speaker and has delivered several invited talks as a resource person. And uh, I, uh, we, uh, last year, we also invited Dr. Amrina, Amrin for uh, delivering a lecture on uh, e-labs. So that was very wonderful. And uh, she's a very good resource person. And... Uh, she also monitored two PhD scholars who completed in the year 2020 and currently under her two PhD students are uh, like they are being guided and who got their registration under Dr. S. Goel at Bits Pilani, Hyderabad. And also she guided four master projects. She is well connected to research groups and uh, also she is the annual member for World Researchers Association and Society of Ele Electroanalytical Chemistry. I would say that at this young age, so many achievements. So we are very lucky to have her second time. And she's very like good enough and kind enough to accept our invitation. So with this brief intro, I once again thank and welcome Dr. Amreen. And also I request her to deliver her lecture and address our students. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am, for the warm welcome and the introduction. And I'm really glad to be part of your institution because I enjoyed the first well so much for inviting me again a uh, very good afternoon to all of you i hope all our students and staff both here so i hope everybody is safe sound staying in home for a few more days till we are a little bit okay to reopen the colleges so maybe i would like to share the screen ma'am is it okay 
Yes, ma'am, you can. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, ma'am, it's is, is it, yeah. Yes, ma so moving before to the actual part, of course, uh, I would also like to mention that apart from working as a young scientist in Bitspalani, I'm also a registered faculty in St. Anne's College still, although I am not working as a regular faculty there, but I am the IPR coordinator there. So IPR stands for the Intellectual Property Rights. Uh, in the year 2019, St. Anne's have established uh, their St. Anne's uh, Intellectual Property Rights Cell as an initiative for Institute's uh, Innovation Council. So here uh, I would like to represent that activities also because they act as a platform for all the nearby and the local and the uh, national level colleges also for helping them to file the patents and all. So today's topic, as you can see, it is about the intellectual property rights in India. So I am sure many of you does not understand this term. What is the meaning of intellectual property? Because usually we know property means we have homes, we have lands, we have jewelry, we have money and all such sort of materialistic things. We call it as a property. And when it comes to intellectual when you're adding the word intellectual before the property. So it is basically an intangible substance. That means something which cannot be touched with hands, cannot be lifted, cannot be picked. There are no thieves there to steal those things, yet it can be stolen. So unlike your normal properties which you possess, which is jewelry, money, land, and also, there are these ideas, the thoughts, the processes that you develop, the products, the inventions that you create, which are the work of your mind are considered to be intellectual properties. Basically, if you define it, it is called as like intangible. So this comprises of all the processes, ideas, graphics, designs. Let us say I am putting a particular Mehendi design on my hand. And I don't want anybody else to copy that Mehendi design. It need not be any significant big time project I'm talking about. I'm talking about a small, small things which belongs to your brain, which is coming out of your mind. So any such ideas, any such formulations, which you want, which you don't want others to copy. We often see you open the internet, you take the design and you yourself will copy it and you'll put it in your hand, you apply it on your hand. But if I don't want that, I can take the rights of that design. Let's say I have a unique recipe. I'm cooking something which is very much tasty, which is good. It's a new process. Nobody else have utilized it. Some new recipe. And I don't want others to copy my recipe. Then that is my intellectual property. So it is not just in terms of big scientific research. Intellectual properties can be anything that comes out of your brain, which is a useful product in the society, whether it's design or graphics or anything. So what this IPR does is, see, if you have a house, if you have a land, if you have a jewelry, you can protect it by keeping it in the safes, the lockers, you can have security guards and so many things, because those things can be lifted by hands, can be touched by hands. But these ideas, these formulations are very much fragile anybody can take it anytime you must have heard so many times people saying Are, this was my idea i was thinking of doing this somebody else have already done so how do you protect those so intellectual property rights is the uh, i can say uh, initiative of the government which will protect your ideas by the law so if you take my idea if you steal my invention without my permission then you are eligible to go to jail. I can file a case against you. I can just let you take you to the court because that is my property. So intellectual property rights basically aims 
to protect those substances which are intangible in nature and they are creations of your own. So why do we need IPR? Because I already told, first of all, to protect the inventions from somebody else to copy it. Otherwise, if 100 people are doing same thing, but it was invented by you, it was uh, like you were the first person in the entire globe to discover or uh, to invent that, to create that. But if 100 people are copying it, then there is no worth of it. So and there is there are hundreds of benefits associated with the inventor. If you're making some product, if you're selling it, then you should be the person who should be able to get whatever profit comes out from it. Let's say if I'm copying and getting the same uh, profit, then you're at a loss. So it protects your particular ideas. It protects your products from getting copied and it will give you a benefit in the higher commercialization point of view where you can sell your products. Same way, it will also protect the consumers because you see if you're in the market, let's take an example of cola. You have Coca-Cola, you have Pepsi, you have Thumbs Up, you have so many varieties are there. All are same. If I just take it, take it out in a piece of a glass and keep it next to each other, with seeing you may not be able to identify, identify which product is what. Of course, by taste, you can say this is this, this is that. But in case, if I just ask you to pick Pepsi out of all three, you cannot do that. So they're all the copies of same. It's one and the same. Although the taste is different, texture is different, but the similarity in the, the way they appear is same. So in this way, when it comes to the consumers, there are thousand cheap copies of that also. You get so many other types of local colas also. People will pack in the bottle and sell you. So how do you protect that consumer? How, you, how is the safety of consumers assured when there are different properties being copied? And next thing is it will encourage more innovation, which means let us say if I'm inventing something, if you see that, okay, this lady has done some research, she has developed something and uh, she has been getting profit out of it then automatically it will create in you or the zeal to invent something. So intellectual properties will motivate you to specifically share. It will become like more encouragement for innovation. Then last, it will be like it's most important actually. It's the financial benefit. Because the inventor has to get all the profits. If it is a my product, if I am making something, then only I should be able to sell it. Nobody should be able to steal and sell it. So these are the most ah, important. So these are, I think somebody's mic is unmuted. So these are some of the salient features of intellectual property rights, why we need in India. It is not only in India, it is present everywhere. Globally, it is there. Let's see what are the different types of rights you can take. Now, intellectual properties, you have understood. All the graphics, designs, and formulations. All the graphics, designs, and formulations, and all the ideas of your mind are your properties. Now, how can you protect them? So there are four major categories in which this intellectual property rights can be protected. They are called patents. They are called trademarks. They are called... Yeah, so there are four types. You have patents, you have trademarks, you have copyrights, and you have trade secrets. Let's see one after the other what are there because since you are new to this thing, let's start to understand from the basics what are there. Uh, Ma'am, can I just mute all like because it's kind of disturbing? Uh, Sujana, you can do that. Maybe at the end, we can unmute if they have questions. <clears throat> so moving on to what is a patent. 
patent is basically a grant which is given from the government which will guarantee for a specific period of time that you are the person who can make it who can sell it and who can use and you can get benefit out of it but it lies only for specific time for example if i am inventing a new some sort of a device or new type of a let's say hair clip for example if i have made a new Sujana, you, I think you have uh, muted, madam. Also, now, now it's unmuted, ma'am. Yeah, is it audible, ma'am? Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. You are audible. Okay. So, patent basically uh, is a grant from the government, which will make sure that if you are inventing something, only you can make it, only you can sell it, and you can get a profit from it. Next comes the trademark. So trademark, you must have seen like so many, let's say your own college or any other colleges or any institutions or books, publications, everybody has this specific symbol or logo. If you look at that logo, you know that this belongs to this company. Let's say if I say I have a product of Nike, then if you look at the Nike symbol, you will know it's a Nike. If it's a product of Bata, you know what is Bata. If it's a product of Microsoft, you know how the Microsoft logo looks like. You know how the Windows logo looks like. So all these logos or the phrases or the symbols or the designs are called as trademark. So every company, every organization, every institution has their own trademark. Nobody can copy that trademark. So they are also a sort of intellectual properties only, and they are protected by this government act. Nobody can copy one other's trademark. You must have heard sometimes that the same logo was copied. So that is the reason they have put a case on that company. So that's the another sort of intellectual property right, which is given to the owners to protect their identification marks. Next comes the copyright. So this is the most simple form of protection. For your writings, let's say you have some musical composition, you have some pictures, you have some artworks, you have some uh, graphical work, or you have some writing, story writings, film scripts, movie scripts, songs, or writing, all those things which are written by you. Nobody can take them, nobody can steal them, nobody can copy them if you have a copyright for them. Let's say I've written a story. Some 200 pages ka story I have written and I have just given it to one of my friends to read it. Or if I have given it to one of somebody I know just to read and give me the opinion. And if they take that, if they publishes, publish that particular story in their name, if I don't have a copyright, then I will lose that. But before getting it into the public, if I am getting a copyright of that, nobody can republish or nobody can take my name off that writings so any literary or musical or pictorial or audio visual you must have seen the copyright sign in the beginning of movies if you watch movies in the uh, beginning they will be right copyright at copyright of uh, certificate will be there which means you cannot copy the story of this movie because the director the writer the producer has the rights on it same way, you cannot just take the pictures or you cannot steal the audios. You cannot take the videos in the theater. You must have seen. Why? Because it is illegal. They have a copyright for their stories. So you cannot take it. And next form, which is the last form of intellectual property, is called as a trade secret. So any design, any patent, patents or any formulas or any sort of thing which is selling your product. For example, if you take any food company, let's say Coca-Cola, they will never tell you what is the recipe of their drink. Let's say Nestle, Maggie, they will never tell you what is that Maggie sachet masala. Everybody knows that all of us have been eating Maggie. And without the sachet of that masala, Maggie is not useful. Nobody can tell you what are the spices in that particular thing, how that masala is prepared, and what is giving that distinct taste to Maggie? There are different types of instant noodles. We all eat almost. 
we have maggie we have raman we have this we have vp i don't know so many are there each particular noodle has their own recipe has their own specific masala packets none of them matches with each other so that is the trade secret of that particular company they will never tell you what is in the business same way if you talk about the business of advertising movie industry or anything they will never tell you what is their trade secret so that is also another type of intellectual property so to protect all these things indian patent act or the patent law was set up in the year 1856 later on so many amendments were done to it in 1911 1972 and finally the patent act or the amendment which we follow today has been set in the year 2005 and actually the present act has been started from 1970 only but slowly slowly so many amendments were done and today whatever we follow we follow from the year 2005 whatever has been given by the government of india so when you talk about patent uh, first of all many of us don't know what is a patent because we will be not aware of these things that my idea can also be protected we have ne never thought that you, this, this is something new for many of us and when you hear some somebody might have heard so and so scientist they have so many patents i'm sure you must have almost watched so many movies and so many sci-fi movies where they will say that particular scientist has a patent so whenever we think about the term patent this is the picture we get in our mind somebody who is very intellectual somebody with uh, hands full of books chemicals and you know this particular image comes only this particular scientist can file the patent that's how it comes to our mind but that is not the case because no level of education no level of degree irrespective of your job irrespective of your work irrespective of your qualification whatever you do doesn't matter you can patent anything in the world that you have developed let's see some simple examples all of us know this particular thing this is the can opener right we when we drink any cans you just take this particular opener and you flip it across and it opens the can so some day somebody thought like if there are steel cans if there are these cans has to be opened then this has to be used somebody just used their brain one part of the brain and they invented this particular loop now this particular loop has been patented globally now you can imagine how many cans in the world has this they are actually innumerable any grocery store you go at least you'll have 10 to 15 different types of companies having these canned products with this loop only one store in one locality i'm talking about so this loop is used globally now all countries all the supermarkets across the globe uses cans with these loops so the person who invented this loop just a simple loop not even the can he has filed a patent for this he said that whoever is going to use my loop for their product they have to pay me the money because i have invented this this is my idea it came in my brain so i have invented this thing now if you want to use it for your product then you have to pay me for that so wherever whichever company is using this loop to make their cans they will pay even today to that person it is called as royalty so royalty is something that will last till this product is lasting of course the time period is limited again it has to be renewed and if the product is commercially available it will be renewed let's let's see how much time and all later on so you can understand there is no qualification needed in this there is no degree irrespective of whether you are in intermediate whether you are ug whether you are a school student or whether you are a doctorate or a scientist doesn't matter somebody developed a small thing patented it and even today he is sitting and taking the money whenever this can whenever one can you are opening just remember that he has been paid for that same way another interesting thing you like to know you must have eaten pizzas and you saw this tripod stand in pizza this is just actually meant to stop the pizza from collapsing 
because the toppings used to get uh, like disturbed by the top layer of the cardboard carton in which they come so somebody just used the brain and they decided ki chalo let's just put a small tripod stand so that it gets protected but before that let me patent it so what that particular person did he patented he patented this particular tripod stand so now whichever company of pizza in the world is going to use this particular stand the part of their pizza money has to be given to this person as a royalty so now you can understand how important it is to file a patent to protect your ideas because if you don't on a large scale somebody else will make use of it and you will be at a loss so with the simple inventions which nobody ever thinks we all discard these things you must have never thought that this is patented we don't even look at this thing we open the pizza and we just throw it none of us have ever imagined that this particular thing can also be patented so it is not necessary what education qualification you have whether you have a research background or not nothing patent has nothing to do with it somebody use their brain so with this you have an idea now that who can file a patent whether you're a man woman child organization older younger doesn't matter at any age any caste any creed nothing comes in uh, like nothing matters when it comes to filing a patent if you have an idea if you have developed something just go ahead file it if it is of useful so of course now what are the things that can be patented it is very important that you understand this because of course you can patent everything in the world whatever you are developing whatever you are uh, creating inventing but there are certain limitations so let's see what are the things first that you can patent it so any inventions whether it's a process whether they are machines whether they are matter whether it's a composition whether it is new or whether you are enhancing the previously existing one procedures any industrial applications all these things can be patented if they are not available to public first you cannot go on internet you cannot go on instagram go and type there i have developed this thing today i am using from 20 days and then somebody else will start using it after that you cannot patent it if you want to patent your process if you want to patent something that you are developing then it should not be in the public domain first you go patent it and then you can publicize it anywhere and the invention must be useful if you are patenting something of no use then it's nobody is going to buy it nobody is going to make use of it you will get nothing out of it patent whole purpose is that your idea should be protected so that you should be benefited benefit it should be beneficial for you and you should be benefited both economically financially and you should grow more if the invention is not useful nobody uses it so then it's of waste of course you can file but it's waste it's not going to get anything to you it's not going to fetch any profit to you and the things which are not obvious let's say if i am saying that if i am adding water into the sugar it's giving me homogeneous solution i am this is my idea i'll go and patent it no you cannot because it's an obvious thing you can argue so many things i am adding this quality sugar that quality sugar no doesn't matter obvious things cannot be patented you cannot say i am going to paint a wall black in color after that the reflection will be not there this idea i am going to patent no it's an obvious thing i'm closing the windows and the breeze is not going to come you cannot go and patent that so all the these things which are obviously happening obviously they are going to happen cannot be patented and the most important is your invention should be novel you cannot copy someone else's invention you cannot just steal someone else's idea that is very very crucial there are certain things that you cannot file patent for you should know that very well for example anything that is going to be harmful to environment or to the health of human animal and plants that things you cannot patent it you have to be very careful when it comes to making products that it should not be harmful to lives of people or human or animals or plants similarly you cannot patent the biological warfare materials you cannot just patent your bombs and nuclear things and all those things because they are going to lead to mass destructions 
you cannot patent the uh, objects like uranium thorium plutonium radium all these radioactive materials if you're developing a new material just don't you cannot patent it you cannot patent your names i cannot say amreen is my name so nobody else can keep the same name no you cannot patent any technologies or medicines let's say if today we all are seeing on like i know that it's a very unfortunate thing i should not be making fun or or it should be not made fun of i am not the one who is making but there are so many people who are doing that it is actually a very wrong thing to do but we have seen in the recent few days because of the fever cold and so many rising cases people have been misusing dolo 650 we have seen so many comedy sketches coming out out of it where people are making fun that in india dolo 650 is being used like a normal chocolates which is a very very bad thing to do you should never self medicate yourself but unfortunately it, it is happening so people are just going if they are having a fever they are taking dolo 650 we have just seen in re- recent few weeks last few weeks the sale of dolo 650 was also increased in india because people had started thinking if you take that medicine the fever comes down and then everything is fine so unfortunately it's a very bad thing to do nobody should do that but it is happening so if somebody would have patented this paracetamol if somebody would have patented the formulation of this particular medicine then they will not be it may not be available for everyone so medicines which are life saving equipments that are life saving you cannot patent them you have to keep it open in public domain then already existing processes which are present in the public domain you cannot patent it so these things if you are inventing something you have to keep in mind that whatever you are doing should not fall into this particular category then i may not give you that much of detail of how to file a patent and all but basics at least you should know so there are three basically type of applications in indian act as per the indian rights where you can file one is called as a normal ordinary patent and patent of addition and patent of convention let's see what they are and other classification will be patent of a product and patent of a process so ordinary means any individual organization institution industry anybody can apply for any novel process or product whatever they have invented patent of addition means any organization individual or industry anybody can apply for adding or removing of steps let's say if there are 20 steps in making a dish let's understand this way you are having 20 steps in which one dish can be created but you have developed some new methodology according to which if you remove some 10 steps from that the same product is coming out dish is getting ready in 10 steps then you can patent that process so anything which you are developing by addition or removal of steps or modification of steps which is improving the process not it's not like if you are if there are 20 steps and if you are making it 30 steps and still the product is same then it's of no use ha huh, if it is 20 steps instead of that you are doing it in 5 steps with better product then you can patent it so such type of patent applications are called as patent of addition then you have patent of convention so any application filed in terms of international patent like uh, already in the globe somewhere in the other country you have us patents you have canada patents australia every country has their own patent act so if some patent has already been filed there but you are trying to do some improvement in that let's say somebody holds a patent in us but my process is 10 times better than that process and i'm doing addition to that that patent can be filed in the category of patent of convention so globally if you are trying to find out some process and improve it that is your patent of convention then there is another thing called application of patent so what do you do how do you go and apply for the patent now so india has a, a particular specific organization is there we have intellectual property rights division in the government section where they also are available online and you can go and check the website of intellectual property rights india in that you have all the processes of how to file a patent in your name how what are the rules what are the regulations everything will be mentioned so there are two types of patents that you can file one is complete another is provisional let's say i have started developing a process 
one day I woke up, I got an idea, let me develop this thing. I started developing it, but I'm scared. Like if I'm on the way of developing, somebody else might take it. So if I want to protect that before the product is formed, I can file a provisional patent, which means I will go and just tell to the government, I'm working on this particular thing. If it comes, this belongs to me. That is called as provisional, where it's a temporary patent, where still the process is not complete. It is in the initial state. Next is the complete patent. Let's say I already have made a product and I want some industry to take it and sell it, but they should give profit to me. Then I can go and file a complete patent, get that patent in my name. Then I can allow the industry to use my process. And then the industry or anybody who is using has to pay me for what I have developed. So these two things are separate things. One is like either you have a full product, which you want to keep it in your name, or you just have an idea which you want to keep it to yourself that you can file as a patent. There's a small condition when you file a patent that is called as claim. So claim in a patent is nothing but it's the actual part that you want to protect. <clears throat> Let us take an example that if you want to uh, bake a cake without baking powder, then here the inventor can claim the method. For example, they can say, I or V depends upon how many people are doing it together. Patent is not an individual thing. It can be done by multiple number of people. Some 10 people can sit together and do one invention. Doesn't matter. In that case, you will write that we claim the use of X, Y, Z instead of baking powder for this particular recipe. That means the main process in what is the main step of your process? What is the main condition? that is giving the product that is called as a claim so there is a format to write that for example it should begin with i or v claim then you should write at the end of the specifications and what is the invention and how many members are there <clears throat> this is not uh, that significant for you maybe when you file it you can understand more details but most important is to understand what is the meaning of a claim so any process, the actual part of the patent that you are trying to protect is called as a claim. So here the claim is XYZ usage. Instead of baking powder, I'm using XYZ to get this recipe done. So my claim is XYZ. Nobody should use that XYZ because I'm the first person who decided. In case if you want to use it, then you have to either take my permission. If I allow you, then only you can use or you have to take my permission and sell it and if you get a profit you have to share with me that's my choice because it is my intellectual property so there are different parts of a claim like preamble transition and body of claim maybe not that significant for you here you can just mention what is it like if you're having a device if you're having a method if it's a composition whatever it is you can mention it maybe this is not that significant for you Let's try to understand this a uh, little bit more uh, detail. Preamble means, let's say you have an apparatus and uh, transition is the comprising and the body is like uh, four legs. For example, if I'm having this particular product here, can you see this table here? So if I can say four legs, circular strip surfaces there, eight screws are there, brown color, five inch thick, four feet tall, conical, pointed legs, wooden, all this is the description. This is what I have made, for example, this design of the stool I have made. So I'm going to patent each and everything of that. So wh what can you claim? You can claim as it's a multi-purpose use apparatus. Let's say if I'm writing claim, we claim an apparatus used for sitting made from wood consisting of four conical pointed legs, circular strip surface, 140 inches, four feet tall, five inch thick screwed, eight metal screws. I cannot file a patent like this. I cannot claim it like this. What you need to do is you have to write, we claim a multi-purpose use apparatus because the stool can be used for sitting, the stool can be used for standing, the stool can be used for any writing or anything you can do that. So if I just mention that it is used for sitting, somebody else will come and say, I have developed an another design of this particular stool, which is used for standing, which is used for sitting, which is a table, it's not a stool. 
So you have to be very smart when you're claiming your things. You have to just mention it's a multi-purpose usage, what metal you're using, wood you're using, and then you have to give specific sizes. Let's say if you're giving eight metal screws, somebody will come and tell, I have 20 metal screws, it's different from your device. It's different from your apparatus. So that's why you should not mention any specific points in the particular claim that should not give a loophole for someone to steal it. So this is like a little bit in detail, maybe not that significant for you. Moving on to different stages of patent filing. So it's not a small process. It's quite a lengthy process. Like when you start filing the patent, first you have to write full application or provisional. In that you have to mention like whatever you have done, starting from A to Z, this is the process that I have done. These are the 20 steps that I have followed. This is what the product is. This is how I have done the difficulties. In the market, this is not there. You have to give the market survey. You have to show that my product is more beneficial than any other thing. All those things you have to prove that whatever you have done is significant. Then once you take the forms, there are different forms which are available on the Indian Patent Act website. So if you take that form, fill the form, put the specification and submit it to the patent office, then it gets published online. That means somebody will go through your application in the government office and they will make it available on internet for the entire world to see. Globally, it will be showing that this particular person has developed this thing. Then you have to have a request for examination. Your patent will be examined by the reviewers. That means let's say I'm saying that my product is the best. I have developed this. But what is the proof? Somebody has to examine it. Somebody has to prove that I'm not lying. So there will be an examination of whatever patent you're going to file. Then they will give you a report, first examination report. After that, they will keep it for the experts, comments will come. So all these entire process of patent filing, filing may, may happen in a day or two. You can just finish your work. You can just get the specifications and file. But patent examination and the grant of patent will take at least four years. Like, first of all, if you see, once it is publication, within 18 months of filing, it will get published online. Then within 48 months of filing, examination will be done. Then after that, within 12 months of first examinations, you have to give your review. Again, another 12 months. So approximately four to six years will happen to get this patent. But there is always an easy way. There's a thing called fast track. So a little bit of more fees if you pay, it will. Fee structure, if you see, which is available on the website of Indian Patent Act, each particular stage will have a nominal fee if you go without any fast track. But if you pay a little bit of extra fee based upon what thing you want to be done first, whether publication should happen first, whether you should examination should happen first or whether your uh, grant should come first, all these things have speed up processes. To speed up the process, you have different fast track fees that should be paid. But if you're not ready to do that, then you have at least four years. And in this four years, nobody uh, actually cannot steal. For example, once filing the patent, I can make it available to the market. Let's say I have a strategy uh, that to develop a particular device or a particular thing or a particular design is there in my mind, which I want to sell to an industry. So after once you file itself, you can give it to the industry because once it is filed in your name, it is yours till it is granted. Or whether if it is not granted also till four years or till the time the examination of patent happens, it is in your name only. So nobody can steal. Then there is term for patent. It's not like the patent is going to be lifelong. It's about five years from the day of it is granted, specifically if it's a medicine or if it's a food item. So medicines formulations can be patented, but medical co the components cannot be. For example, if I am making a medicine using a paracetamol, which is a general compound, I cannot say that paracetamol should not be used by anyone. You can see in the market, same paracetamol is sold with different names. You have Dolo, you have Crocin, you have Colpol, you have Parasip, so many Parasafe, Parasif, so many are there. All are paracetamol only. Same way, all are like different painkillers with same name will be there. You have antihistamines. There are number of antihistamines. If you just see, you have Allegra, you have Citrusin. Citrusin is uh, this thing. With different names, you get Citrusin. 
so the main chemical compound cannot be patented but your formulation you can patent nobody will tell you what is the formulation of tolo 650 nobody will tell you what is the formulation of crocin that can be patented by the company same way any other thing let's say you have the sanitary napkins there are different types of sanitary napkins available today nobody will come and tell you how they are preparing what the what is the absorbent material they are using nobody will go and tell you you cannot patent just the sanitary napkin i cannot say that i am the only company who is going to make this in the world no but you can safeguard your process each one has their own merits and demerits so based on what is your product you can do it on your own and <clears throat> you cannot uh, particularly in case of food medicine and this hygiene and safety things you cannot patent the uh, main ingredient but you can patent your processes and other and inventions are given for about 14 years let's say i have a device or if i have a machine or something that can be granted for about 14 years then there is a thing called expiry of patent so whenever the term is completed whether it is a 5 years or 7 years or 14 years once it is completed your patent gets expired and then anybody can take it but if you don't want that you have to reapply it, it it's like depending upon what sort of product it is then if you don't do the renewal fee a nominal renewal fee will be there if you don't pay the nominal renewal fee your patent will be removed from the indian patent act then it becomes vulnerable anybody can take it same way it is like if somebody else is uh, opposing it let's say a patent is challenged by an opposition in patent office or court if i have filed a patent for some idea but you feel that you are the person who had given this idea and i have taken it from you and if you go and file a case against it that patent will be <clears throat> revoked so of course we have seen who can apply uh, anybody who is a citizen of india or not doesn't matter both can apply and you can apply as an individual let's say if you are a student you can apply individually also or if you can apply with your faculty you can apply with your friends your anybody so it's individual or joint anything it <clears throat> it can be applied by a company or it can be applied by an inventor let's say if you are doing something in your college if you are working a particular experimental procedure or something or if you are developing a product in your college either your college can apply or you can also apply as a inventor individually so once you apply for the patent or once you file the patent there are certain rights that are assigned to you which are called as right of a patentee because you are a patentee now first is that you can exploit your patent as you like your procedure is yours nobody can take it same way there will be the grant of license you can give the i i can give a license of my product to anyone if i have a patent for that i can surrender it i can sue anybody for infringement that means if anybody is copying it then i can take them to the court moving on to the trademarks which all of you know it is nothing but name or logo or phrases or design or image or or it could be combination of everything and that trademark is a particular owner's right nobody can copy it if somebody takes it then it is called as infringement and it will actually give an identity to the company so my company or my institution my organization can go and they can just file a case against if somebody is stealing my logo why do we need that particular trademark because it is descriptive that means whenever you look at it you can understand what is the company about then it is distinctive it that means it differentiates your company from others and then it is non identical it should not be matching with someone else these are some of the common <clears throat> i'm sure most of you have seen this you can see kellogs you can see facebooks you can see motorola all these common unilever yahoo all these are like common trademarks which we see nobody can steal each other's trademark the moment you look at this simple the moment i if i show you this you will say it's a facebook the moment i show you you'll know it's a yahoo so all these are called as trademarks moving on to the copyrights as already mentioned copyrights are nothing but these are the things which are the ideas or which whatever you are writing it so 
it gives the writer or the creators of the literary or any sort of artistic works the right to safeguard their writings let's say if you have a novel if you have a poem or if you have some sort of compositions musical compositions if you are having drawings sculptures anything films or whatever is in your capacity of your literary or if your idea from your brain you can just copyright it what there are certain things which does not fall under copyrights for example i already mentioned that it's a name it's fact blank forms if i am not filling if just a simple blank forms with the names or institution and uh, the forms with the common forms which we fill you cannot take the copyright of that then stock devices and titles or the book titles or uh, not the book titles titles in the sense uh, let's say anybody mr miss doctor all these titles cannot be copyrighted i cannot say that because i am dr amreen because i have done phd nobody else can take doctor no that cannot be done that so these there are certain things which cannot comes under copyright then for the copyright also there is a duration like till the author's lifespan plus 50 years from the calendar year in which the author dies let's say if somebody has written a movie or somebody has written a book till they are alive the copyright belongs to them after they die up to 50 years the copyright belongs to the person he is nominating let's say some great writer has nominated his son like after i die my book copyright will be given it to my son so such things what happen 50 years after the death of the author this can be done same thing for films and song up to 50 years they cannot be copied old films old songs you see they are being remade now because after 50 years the copyright won't be there and anybody can remake it for any topographical published data topographical means geographical data or anything that you have written for those up to 25 years the copyright can be given last thing which comes under intellectual property is your trade secret so already uh, like i tried to explain what does it mean let's try to understand what are like the different types so trade secret is first of all it's a commercial information that as the name itself suggests trade which means business secret to of course we know it cannot be shared with everyone so whatever is running the commercial business or the commercial information falls under your trade secret next is any sort of negative information for example if somebody knows that particular company is in loss if particular product is in loss because of this reason so that particular reason is again the trade secret it could be used for against the benefit of the company next is the scientific information and technical information let's say the formulations we have amul amul products there are so many products of amul which we consume every day but they will never tell you what are the technical things they are using to prepare that products they will never tell you what is the scientific formulations they are applying in their products if they have a cheese if they have a butter then what is the type of microorganisms that they are using to product that to produce that so the trade secret can be used as a negative thing against the company to get down the business of the company so that is the reason they will never tell the what is the trade secret but the company can file file this trade secret for themselves they can just uh, go to the government official website they can take the form of trade secret and they can write it there in case some day somebody let's say there are thousands of employees working in one particular company if somebody steals it somebody goes and joins to the rivaling company and they sell the trade secret then that time it becomes a huge loss let's say if, if all of the companies get to know what is the magic masala uh, spices then everybody will start producing so it will be a great loss to maggi so they will what they do they protect the trade secret recipes whatever is selling the product that is also a particular form of intellectual property so this is just for you to understand like for example uh, kfc and any sports drinks formulations or algorithms and their marketing strategies all these things will be coming under the trade secret <clears throat> so the last thing that comes to our mind is like we are talking about applying patent and trade secrets and all these things but where do we do that 
of course now everything is being done online everything is e e filing has come into picture plus most importantly post pandemic all these things are getting online but earlier also there were things which is called as e filings so basically in india if you are there and if you want to file a patent there are four offices of patent you have in mumbai you have in delhi you have in chennai and you have in kolkata so these eight patent offices this is not just a patent office it is called as intellectual property rights office because intellectual property has four things we have just seen so all these four things can be filed there in these offices based upon which territorial jurisdiction you fall for example people belonging to gujarat maharashtra madhya pradesh goa and daman diu and uh, the other <clears throat> all these places in mumbai they go nearby to mumbai then people who are staying in the area surrounding delhi like haryana himachal jammu and kashmir punjab rajasthan up ncr all these people will go to delhi office people who are staying in the southern part of india like ap kerala telangana tamil nadu pondicherry lakshadweep all these people will go to chennai patent office go in the sense you have to file in chennai patent office you need not go there physically and rest of the india apart from these states whatever states are mentioned here they can file in the head office which is present in kolkata so if you are uh, staying in the southern part chennai would be the nearest patent office so what the process will be you have to go to the website you have to download the forms you have to see the fee structures which is again available on the forms and with each form there is a specific fee fill in that forms take a hard copy of it fill in those forms make a dd of that specific fee whatever form 1 form 2 there are so many forms based upon what type of it is and each form will have a description mentioned along with it on the website only once you fill the form you pay the fee pay fee payment will be nowadays online as well as through demand draft so you make the dd fill the forms and then you send a hard copy within the reach 24 hours of reaching the hard copy for example if i am sending from hyderabad it reaches around 24 hours to chennai office and within 48 hours i will get an acknowledgement email that this particular patent has been filed so it's a very quick and a very simple process but after filing it is a lengthy process where it takes about 4 years for getting the grant minimum why because the examination is something which is very important to deal with after filing the patent so in a nutshell this is how the patent uh, intellectual property right is this is what actually intellectual property right means and this is how the process of patent is done in india so i hope everybody could understand something am um, i hope i'm on time yes ma'am so is there any questions i would like to answer uh, srujana uh, check whether any questions are there in the chat box if they want they can interact also now i think ma'am in case if anybody is willing to there's one more piece of information i would like to share so uh, as i already mentioned saint anne's have started their intellectual property rights and i work as an ipr coordinator there now so anybody who is willing to go through this process can approach us we will help them in filing the patents the process and everything will be okay. dealt with us you can contact us okay thank you so much for the information madam like we yes, are we are, will forward to our uh, faculty members also and uh, in the college also so yes, is it yes. like a um, uh, like an agency or you are starting any uh, no not um, agency ma'am actually uh, we have institute innovation council cell as per the ministry of education's norms so according one of the part of uh, institute innovation council cell is the ipr cell intellectual property mm -hmm. rights cell so it's open uh, as a mentor like institution we are supposed to take the nearby colleges or anybody who approaches us to help so them like to file the patent kind of like is it yeah. consultancy yes like uh, yes, will you of. charge or it, uh, is it free of cost ma'am 
no ma'am we won't charge actually because uh, there is a patent fee that you will be paying but it just you have to acknowledge our college like uh, it is going through our college like that acknowledgement that's all okay. we won't charge anything yeah so thank you madam your session was very good and uh, i think uh, you have focused all the basic concepts a student yes, need i tried yeah hour so starting from the definition to the filling of patents so thank you so much madam and uh, over to srijana yes ma'am ma'am so you can share the yeah you are audible yes Uh, Ma'am uh, from Department of Chemistry, uh, we would like to present you certificate of appreciation. Please accept it, Ma'am. Thank you, Ma'am. Thank you so much, and I would definitely like to thank the entire management because they have invited me twice. I hope I justified their trust in me, and yes, I'm, I really appreciate that. Uh, I saw the target group was BSc and MSc. so basically yes. this is the basic level where student needs to understand because usually patent means most of them will not know what it is and they think it is something really big people can only do so i'm i really appreciate the fact that you are encouraging your students at this level it's really commendable yes, ma'am well, thank and you even so in much our for inviting ma'am ma'am i would yes, like to say something like in uh, semester 3 we have this ipr as one of the skill enhancement course for pg students yes, it yes, is mandatory i course. got it. it is very crucial ma'am because nowadays even in the government all the colleges they are asking us to go for ipr and also for iic so because student level if you are inculcating this it's very commendable ma'am congratulations to your team and everyone yes ma'am uh, srijana you can propose formal vote of thanks thank you ma'am uh, good afternoon one and all i miss p sujna faculty forensic science extend a warm welcome to all of you for this virtual gathering on behalf of department of chemistry and forensic science rdvr women's college would like to express my gratitude to all the esteemed persons of this webinar for their presence and contribution to make this a great success at the outset i would like to thank our speaker dr kairunisa amreen ma'am Uh, for sparing her precious time today with us to grace this occasion and enlightening us today for today's webinar on intellectual property rights in india i must mention our profound sense of appreciation for making an excellent presentation and making this session very meaningful and interesting ma'am has talked about what actually is an intellectual property right types of ipr Uh, you have clearly explained about indian patent act who can file a patent and you also suggested what can be and cannot be patented you have cleared the concepts pertaining to trademarks their requirements copyrights and trade secrets and its types uh, thank you so much ma'am the precious knowledge that you have shared today will definitely helpful to all of us ma'am thank you so much uh, then i would like to convey my sincere thanks to professor mukhyam reddy sir secretary hms and professor sudarshan reddy sir secretary correspondent rbdr women's college for supporting us thank you sir i express my deep sense of gratitude to principal dr achita devi ma'am and vice principal dr kavita ma'am for their stewardship vision and commitment thank you ma'am my heartfelt thanks to dr jeevan jyoti ma'am head department of chemistry for unfaltering support and confidence ma'am you are the backbone of our department and guiding the course for every new step forward thank you ma'am and i would also like to thank staff of chemistry and forensic science department for organizing the session finally i thank the wonderful students and participants who have turned up in such a great numbers and making this session successful i once again thank all for your cordial cooperation thank you have a wonderful day ahead thank you ma'am thank you so much ma'am thank you ma'am can i leave ma'am okay yes ma'am yes thank you ma'am thank you so much uh students please fill the feedback form before leaving and uh, sujana you can stop uh, the live streaming okay oh, yeah.